Lights given. Morning. But as I was looking, I saw a moment of faith in Acts chapter 27. In Acts chapter 27, when Apostle Paul was on a stormy sea as a prisoner, and in the midst of his troubles, he gave thanks, and God gave me a word from this passage. Acts chapter 27, the 35th through the 38th verses. 33rd through the 38th verses. Just as day was dawning, Paul urged everyone to eat. You have been so worried that you haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good, for not a hair of your heads will perish. Then he took some bread, gave thanks to God before them all, and broke off a piece and ate it. Then everyone was encouraged and began to eat. All 276 of us who were on board. After eating, the crew lighted the ship by throwing the cargo of wheat overboard. And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all, as the new King James Version. <coughs> It's very easy to thank God when we are enjoying a blessed time, mm -hmm. an enjoyable occasion, a dynamic worship experience, or some monumental moment or a milestone in your life. Very easy to thank God. Most often it's very easy when we attend a wedding event a birthday party. Somebody gives birth to a child or a graduation or we look on our check and saw a pay raise. And some of us have said they see that this year. Or receiving an award. It's very easy at those times to say thanks. The words thank you seemingly flow from our lips when someone does something for us and we consider that a good thing. And it can be so very gen genuine and so very easy, but on the other hand, it's rather difficult, it seems, when we are going through things sometimes to tell God thanks. So I want to talk about uh, thanksgiving in the time of trouble. Matthew Henry, the great scholar, was robbed, and after the robbery, he wrote this in his diary later that afternoon. He said, let me be thankful first because I have never been robbed before. <laughs> Secondly, he said, though they took my purse or my money, they did not take my life. Thirdly, let me be thankful because although they took all I had, it was very small. And fourthly, he said, let me be thankful because I was robbed and I was not the robber. No matter what the situation is, God is always blessing us. And thus we have reason to thank God uh, even in the midst of our trouble. Apostle Paul was being transported to Rome as a prisoner on a ship. And there in his shackles, uh, he found a reason to thank God. The ship he was on had been adrift at sea for at least two weeks plus. 276 crewmen and, and prisoners were on board who never thought they would see the light of day again. 
But it's time we get into dawn. And Paul warned them from the outset not to take this trip, that it would not be fair weather. But you know, sometimes when people are telling us something for our own good, we act as though they're our enemies. Uh-huh. And who's going to listen to a preacher who is a prisoner on a ship? Uh, but Paul said to them, uh, while it's rough out here, we're not going to die. He further informed them that not only would the storm not take their life, but the trip would not take their life because God had commanded him to preach the gospel in Rome. When Apostle Paul finished going, uh, or giving them the advice, the words of our text are then spoken or written. Paul took some bread, gave thanks in the presence of them all, and ate his food. In the midst of a ship that is being tossed back and forth on a stormy raging sea, Eurocladon, the storm, this man looks at the passengers on the ship and says to them, not one of us is going to lose our life if all of you stay in this ship. And then he took bread in the midst of the storm and gave thanks to God and ate. Now, he had a lot of reason to thank God, I, but I'll just choose five quickly. I think that uh, can be discerned very quickly. He still had his life. That was a reason to thank God. Mm -hmm. The storm could have already taken a life, but it did not. He had food to eat on the ship. So he could thank God for his food. But thirdly, he could thank God that he had an appetite, because a lot of people have food with no appetite. Come on. Then he had life promise tomorrow because God had said to him you're not going to die because you've got to preach in Rome. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, which is most importantly, as some of you said, that he had God on his side. Apostle Paul was a prisoner. He was at storm. He was drifting. There had been darkness for many days and everybody knew they were in trouble. But don't you think it's rather Strange that in all of the darkness, in that ship being tossed back and forth, I need mean, Brother S.D. heard here now, because he talks about being uh, in the military and how one night he didn't know they would make it because the ship was just going back and forth and they were all praying for life. In the midst of this ship going back and forth, Paul says it'll be all right. He took bread, gave thanks, and ate it in the presence of everybody. That's rather strange, isn't it? I want you to see five quick things from, from this passage. Number one, your situation should not determine your thanksgiving. That's right. Your situation should not determine your thanksgiving or your praise. Sometimes we'll be in trouble, we'll be down, we're going to be blue, uh, we're going to fail, we're going to be in a mess, we're going to be mistreated, we're going to go through some stuff, but the Bible says, in all things, come on, all right. give thanks unto God, for this is what? The will of God our Father. Right. David says in Psalms 34, he said, I will bless the Lord. I will win at, at all times, and his praises shall continue. continually be in my mouth. So even though I'm going through a storm, my situation will not determine my thanksgiving. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Apostle Paul is good, not only in this passage, but it seems to be, uh, it seems to be the expression of his life. Because no matter what he was going through, 
this man would not allow his situation to take away his praise. I know we, 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 we sing the song, uh, after all, I still have a praise inside of me, but sometimes folk don't really have it. Pastor Paul had it in Acts 16. He's in chains again. He's in stocks. He's in prison. He's separated. He's in the inner prison from the rest of the prisons, prisoners, Paul and Silas. 